in my version that I looked it up for this preparing in accordance, it was Exodus 20, 13. You might open your Bible and say, Nehemiah's lying to you. It's not verse 13. <laughs> it's verse 15, <laughs> deceiver. But yeah, you just got a different printing of the Bible. I don't know. Shalom and welcome to Hebrew Gospel Pearls. Is this episode 28? Episode 28. This is season exciting. Four. Season four. Here we we go. made it all the way to season four. Today we're going to talk about Matthew chapter five, verses 21 to 22 in Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew. I'm going to read the verses. I'll read it in English first. Okay. Okay. In the NASB, you have heard that what the uh, that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the uh, Supreme Court, and whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Wow. That's what it says in English. Okay. We'll let you do a translation. Have you not heard what was said to the ancients, or the kadmonim, we'll talk about what that means, mm -hmm. thou shalt not murder, and he that murders is uh, obliged or is subject to the uh, judgment of death. And I say to you, He who angers his fellow is uh, subject to judgment. And he who calls his brother pachot, is, or less than, is uh, will will be uh, subject to judgment in the congregation. And he who calls him fool will be mm. subject to the fire of hell. Yes. Okay, here we go. Boy, there's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> Are we finally um, going to get to that end, that last statement about... <laughs> about hell? <laughs> yeah. I, I hope so, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see, where do we start here? So, so I, th I think the place I want to start here is are we dealing with a new section here or is this a continuation of the previous passage? Oh, that's great right? Question. So we have a new episode, right? Which, <laughs> right? So, but that, that just means I spoke too much in, in, in verse 20 and <laughs> didn't get to 21. Um, let's start with this. There's this myth that the text was originally written without um, spaces between the letters and spaces between the words and any kind of spaces and punctuation. That's partially true. Mm -hmm. And I want to show here an image from the Codex Sinaiticus. Wonderful. Codex Sinaiticus is one of the most important manuscripts of the New Testament. There's three nearly complete or complete manuscripts of the New Testament from the 4th century. Codex Sinaiticus, Alexandrinus, Vaticanus. You could throw into that Washington, Antonius, and, um, and Bezai. Those are maybe the five most important. Um, there's ones you could say are more important that are mm -hmm. fragments that are earlier, but I mean large um, manuscripts of the New Testament um, that have all or almost all the New Testament. And here you can see, yeah, there are no spaces. This is in Greek, of course, mm -hmm. and it's written in all capital letters. Mm -hmm. What's called a majuscule script. Um, and uh, so there are no spaces between words. That's true. Mm -hmm. And there's no spaces, uh, well, you wouldn't have space in the middle of a word. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no spaces between sentences, but there are spaces between paragraphs. And here you can see, mm -hmm. um, we've, I've Excellent. marked it out here, mm. that uh, there is uh, some kind of a space after Matthew, even has a symbol there, after Matthew, uh, or the beginning of Matthew 20. Mm -hmm. And then in 21, you have a very large space, mm -hmm. right? It's almost half a line mm -hmm. before Matthew 21. So between Matthew 20 and 21, there actually is a division. Mm -hmm. in, uh, that's, in, that's in the Codex Sinaiticus. Um, let's now look at um, the Vatic Vatican manuscript, Codex Vaticanus. And here again, you can see there is a clearly a space between verses 19 and 20. Yep. And in between 20 and 21, there's what's called a paragraphos symbol. Mm 
Mm -hmm. That's a symbol that says this is a new paragraph. You have that at the beginning of 20 as well, mm -hmm. but at the beginning of 21, you have the paragraphical symbol. They didn't have room for the space because the verse ended, verse 20 ended at the end of a line. Mm -hmm. So the paragraphical symbol is even more important here. Um, uh, that tells you this is a new thought. This is a new section. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that's how it is in the Greek. And it makes sense um, that Matthew 21 uh, would be a new, sec new section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why does that make sense? So let's look at this, what we have here. Um, so we have uh, in Matthew 20, now it's interesting, we didn't have time to talk about last episode. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 20 begins at that time, mm -hmm. Yeshua said to his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now what's the Greek equivalent of that? In Matthew 20. What do you have in Matthew 5.20? 5.20 just says, for I say to you. Right. So that whole thing, at that time Yeshua said to his disciples, it's introducing a new paragraph. It's gone. It's not even in the Greek. Mm -hmm. So where did the Hebrew get it? And I guess there's two possibilities. One is that that's originally what Matthew said. And two is that that was added for some reason to the Greek, to the Hebrew rather. Why would somebody add that to the Hebrew? Yeah. I don't know. Um, but Ma but in, Ma in the Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew, there's sections, and the section 15 begins in Matthew verse 20 and goes all the way to 24. Mm -hmm. So 20 is connected to 21 in the Hebrew, but in the Greek, you saw there's a, there's a paragrapho symbol that marks a new paragraph, or there's an actual large space mm -hmm. in one of the manuscripts. So 20 and 21 is dis This is a really important point, because where you begin a thought and end a thought can affect the interpretation. We talked in a previous episode mm -hmm. about rightly dividing the word. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the Hebrew word lifaresh, mm -hmm. the origin of the word, uh, or f has the same origin, lifaresh, as Pharisee, but lifaresh means to interpret. Mm -hmm. And part of interpreting is to rightly divide the text, mm -hmm. rightly dividing it within a verse and also the paragraph. And so when we look in Hebrew manuscripts of the Tanakh, we have these spaces, and you also have them in Greek manuscripts. Now, did the original manuscript written by Matthew, or some people would say it wasn't written by Matthew, whoever wrote it, um, uh, did that have the spaces? I don't know, but our earliest manuscripts, uh, uh, at least these manuscripts we looked at, <laughs> I didn't look at all of them, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus do have these spaces or these mm -hmm. symbols separating out the text. Um, and so, so you know, there's a famous example of this where changing where the chapter ends or the section ends completely changes the meaning yes. or the emphasis. Yes. And it's an example we've given years ago. At this point, 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 wow. years ago, we did Torah pearls. And we started off, and in the first Torah portion, I, I, I assume, because it's been so long, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I assume we talked about that math, uh, Matthew, that Genesis chapter 1 mm -hmm. ends in the middle of creation. Yep. It ends after the sixth day of creation even though the culmination of creation is Shabbat, God resting on the you seventh mean, day. In the English version of the Bible, it ends at the end. Yeah, well, in the Hebrew yeah, text as well, the because the, the Hebrew got yeah. the chapters from, yeah. I mean, the earliest manuscripts of the Tanakh in Hebrew mm -hmm. don't have any chapter. They have spaces between sections yes. and between thoughts. But our modern chapter divisions come from Bishop Stephen Langton. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury. We've told the story. <laughs> it's something like the 13th century. I think he was like traveling to Paris or something or some story about that. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So, so he made up these chapter divisions, not all chapter yeah. divisions. For example, Lamentations actually clearly has five sections, mm -hmm. right? So all he did was number them. Psalms has 149 or 150 or 151 Psalms, right? Yeah. We can argue about that. But Psalms is clearly broken up. Uh, within the Hebrew text itself. But um, most of the chapters we get in both the Old and New Testament, they come from, uh, they come from Stephen Langton, mm -hmm. right? Or sometime in the Middle Ages. Some of them might be mm -hmm. of some books a little bit earlier. Uh, in any event, um, so if we looked at the Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, they break 20 and 21, but in the Hebrew Matthew, they're together. And the question I want to ask, and this is, this may be plus material, I don't know, but I'm going to share it now. What, is, what are the ramifications of breaking the verse, of breaking the paragraph mm. after 20, right? We didn't have time in our episode. That doesn't mean it was the end of thought, right? If 21 is the continuation of the same thought as 20, how is that different than if it's not? And to me, the answer is, and, and let's also mention this. So we have a series of statements where Yeshua has, make, he says, you have heard it said, but I say, you have heard it said, but I say, mm -hmm. right? There's a series of these statements in the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. This is the first of them. Now, it's 
I think verse 20, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, for, first of all, right away when I hear him say, uh, you, you have heard, and, and I know we're going to do, promise me that in this section we'll at least look at one word, which is the word, the ancients. We'll at least look at who he's talking about I'll here. do my best. You'll do your best. Voice permitting. But, but de de <laughs> definitely when he says you've heard whatever, the, say the ancients mm -hmm. in English or the, the, the uh, whoever, you shall not commit murder. Immediately I ask where does that phrase come from? It's an obvious one. That's from the Ten Commandments. It's from the Ten Commandments. So he's yeah. referring back to that. So I mean, saying saying that, okay, you've heard that it was said, that, are the ancients heard or the people of old? Now, Henry, you're going to have to get me clear on we'll this. We'll get to that. But first okay. I want to talk about, yes. what, and maybe we'll save it for the plus section. I feel like we already introduced it. But So, so he, here's the point that I'm trying to make. If 21 is its own thought, okay, we don't even need to look, need to look at 20. But in the Hebrew, 21 is connected to 20. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is that 21 through 24 are an explanation of how to be more righteous than the Pharisees and sages. I mean, but, but to start with, the, the, the 10 commandments, that's yeah. a pretty important uh, oh, section sure. you're referring to. But, but the context set by verse 20 in the Hebrew by connecting it in a single section mm -hmm. is you should be more righteous. Your righteousness should grow more than that of the uh, Pharisees and the sages. Now I'm going to tell you how to do that. And so here's an example, in other words. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> right. Beautiful. All right. So, so now I'll talk to you about the ancients. Now, can we do it Can we do the it in the old way? Can we do it in the sure. old way, folks? Uh, this is the kind of thing you're going to get when you get to uh, the plus section at Nehemiah's wall. We're going to get a chance to look at the words and where these words come from. And so, Nehemiah, this is a, this is mm -hmm. a fascinating one to me. So if I were to ask you how you would translate that mm -hmm. word, it says in English, you heard... Uh, that the ancients were told in Hebrew, Howard says, uh, you have you not heard what was said to those of old? How would you translate the word? Give us the word and tell us what you would do with it. So it says, lakadmonim. Mm -hmm. And I would ask the question, what does the word kadmonim mean mm -hmm. in general? Mm -hmm. And then what does it specifically mean in this context? Going to push you. Would you also try to find out what the root of the word is? Absolutely. Okay, tell people about that. The root. Let them know about that. So there's this principle in Semitic languages in general, in Hebrew in particular, that every noun, adjective, and verb uh, derives from a three-letter root. Yes. Um, it's called the triliteral root theory. It was debated, actually, in the, in the early Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. um, there were sco Jewish scholars who said, no, there are actually words that have a one-letter root or a two-letter root. Mm -hmm. What's an example of a two-letter root? Well, I don't know, the word ben, son. What's the three-letter root of the word ben? Mm -hmm. uh, right? Okay. Uh, fair point. <laughs> um, and that's a very common word, ben, right? Yes. What's the third letter? So, um, so there were, uh, this was debated back and forth. Um, and, and it's very interesting because if you study Rashi, who's a rabbinical commentator from the 12th century, he comes along... 150 or 200 years after the debate was settled and that it was determined without any question that every noun, adjective, and verb has a three-letter root. Now, some words don't, like the word, like there's particles of mm -hmm. speech. Um, there are uh, prepositions, mm -hmm. you know, the prepositions, right? <laughs> so we've got the preposition mean, yeah. from, right. okay, well, that's a two-letter word, right? Right. Et, alf tav, which marks the direct object or can mean with in some cases. Ze. Two letters. <laughs> Ze is an interesting example, uh -huh. yeah? Okay. Um, and Ben is an interesting question. Let's ask the question, what is the root of the word Ben if it's a three-letter root? So let's look in Halot. And, and, and here, remember I talked about in a previous episode how dictionaries are descriptive, not prescriptive? Mm -hmm. So what they're telling me for, for Ben when they give me the three-letter root is what they think it is, right? It's, it's not obvious. If it was obvious, I would know what it was, right? I mean, uh, and this is a problem. There are some roots where we don't always know exactly what the root is. Mm -hmm. So Ben in the dictionary, it doesn't actually give me a three-letter root when I look in Halot or BDB. It's interesting, mm -hmm. right? Now, you could argue the three-letter root is Ibn, like it is in Arabic, Aleph, Bet, Nun, but we don't really have evidence of that. So maybe maybe Ben is an exception to the rule. Or we see Bin sometimes, Bet, Nun, which mm -hmm. I suppose could be spelled Bet, Yud, Nun. Long story short, most words derived from a three-letter root, mm -hmm. um, adjective, nouns, and verbs. So Kedem. Okay, and, and so Kedem, Kuf Dalad Mem, and it has two meanings. And that's why Kadmonim can mean potentially two different things. Okay. And which of those does it mean? Well, that's, you know, it, you, you have to determine from the context. And since we know where Lo Tiltzach was said, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have a pretty, we have a good way of determining what, what the answer is. But let's look and see how it's used in the Tanakh. Mm -hmm. All right. 1 Samuel 24, 14. 
It says, Kashil Yomel Mishal HaKadmoni, as the Proverbs of the Kadmoni says, Me'rashayim Yetzer Resha. Evil goes forth from the evildoers. And he says, V'yadilo Tiyebach, but my hand will not be against you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what is the proverb of the Kadmoni? So 1 Samuel 24, 14, let's, let's look it up and see how people translate this. No, so it's 24, 13 in English. That's why, okay. We talked about the chapters. Mm-hmm. So Hebrew adopted the chapters from the Greeks, but they didn't always implement it in the same way. Sometimes it's one or two verses off. Mm-hmm. In the case of Malachi, there's Malachi 4 in the English. Hebrew only has Malachi 3, mm-hmm. right? So, so it's taken from the English but it, or, uh, or the Latin or the Greek, um, uh, but it's not always implemented in the exact same way. All right, so it's 2413 in 1 Samuel 2413 in the, uh, in the English, uh, in the standard English. And the old saying goes is NIV, New Living Translation. And that old proverb says... Oh, you're going to pass over that that quick and the old saying goes. <laughs> okay. That's the NIV? Yeah, what's wrong with that? that no, I'm saying is the old saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because it's Mishal HaKadmoni, the Mashal, yeah, yeah. the parable of the Kadmoni. Yeah. Okay? Okay. As the old proverb says, the New Living is actually more accurate mm-hmm. in this case than the NIV. Mm-hmm. English Standard Version, as the proverb of the ancients say, uh, King James, as saith the proverb of the ancients. Mm-hmm. So Kadmoni, they're interpreting as ancients, and I'm looking here and I'm seeing everybody interprets it as ancient or old, mm-hmm. and that is one of the interpretations of Kadmoni. Mm-hmm. Um, however, is a possibility that Kadmoni doesn't mean um, ancient, it could also mean Easterner. Mm-hmm. And why would we have a proverb of Easterners? Because the people of the East were considered very wise. Mm-hmm. Job chapter 1, verse 3 talks about Job himself. And it says, And he was a great man from all the sons of the East. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Kedem means East, and Kadmoni hence can be an Easterner. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and the parable of the Easterner makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. We have this idea in many cultures of exotic proverbs, right? I mean, we, we, I mean you've heard that, I assume, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, wasn't there an expression back in the day? I'm not sure I'm still allowed to say it, but wasn't there an expression about like, you know, an ancient Chinese proverb or something like that? And then we have in Fiddler on the Roof where he says, as the good book says, and it's not from the good book, it's something he made up. <laughs> <laughs> or he heard from somebody else. Right. Right. So there's this process of, of, of you have a, a parable and you want to assign it to something exotic, mm-hmm. to something different, maybe to give it more legitimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's not legitimate. Sometimes you're, you're making that up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the proverb of the Kadmoni could be the proverb of the Easterner. Mm-hmm. And so, and that makes sense. It was said to those of, who, of the East, mm-hmm. you shall not murder. Mm-hmm. Well, Nobody in Israel would say that. Someone in Rome could say that. Right. Someone maybe in Athens could say, was it not said, said, like Paul could be preaching on Mars Hill in Athens and say, was it not said to those of the East? Who are those of the East? To the Jews, to the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Right. But in Israel, that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. We're not from the East, mm-hmm. right? If anything, we come from the, you know, it was said in the South where Mount Sinai is south of Israel. So with the two definitions, you think Yeshua is saying of the old ones, the ancient ones. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. But just to show you that it could be Easterners, there's many verses where Kadmoni itself, I'm going to let people look this up because uh, we're gonna, kind of running out of time here. Uh, <laughs> we want to get to the plus section. Kadmoni itself can mean East. Like it talks about Kadmoni being the East of the temple. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have Ezekiel 38, 17. Yes. Thus says Yehovah, I want to read this. This is a beautiful verse. Ezekiel 38, 17. I'm going to read this in the JPS translation here. Um, one second. 38, 17. Actually, let's pull this up in Bible Hub and see what all the translations have. Um, Thus says the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servant, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years? that I would bring thee against them, right? So this is some enemy that's going to come to destroy Israel, mm-hmm. right? Um, we think of prophecies about ancient, you know, ancient prophecies about one to come. That's always a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing right. in this case. Um, so Yamim Kadmonim is the time of the ancients. Yamim Kadmonim is time of the East makes no sense, mm-hmm. right? Days of ancient, of Kadmonim, Kadmonim days have to be ancient days, mm-hmm. right? Now, why is it that it can mean both ancient and Eastern, or that's where the root is important, mm-hmm. So Kedem literally means before. <laughs> so, and this is, this is really interesting. That's really, that's so they've done these studies where languages that are written left to right 
they think of time as moving left to right. And languages that are written right to left often think of languages as, as time moving right to left. But in this case, Kedem, which means before, is, means east. Mm. So let's think about that for a second, if that fits. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And sets in the west. So time goes right to left. <laughs> I guess unless you're standing in the north looking south. <laughs> right, so many, but in any event, Kedda means before. Yeah. And hence it can mean ancient times, but it also means the morning, mm -hmm. that is the east, mm -hmm. right? The sun rises in the morning, so it's the before time. It's interesting, if he would have stopped and just said, uh, you've heard what was said to the ancients, they don't know, is this gonna be a new saying? But then again, he continues to say, this is what it is that you heard. Which is right. the Ten Commandments. Do not, com do not commit murder. Lo right. Tzach, right. So um, to make that long story short, Kadmonim means um, ancients. Uh, Jastro, who we've talked about in the past, looks in later Hebrew after the Tanakh, mm -hmm. and uh, we have Kadmoni referring to Adam HaKadmoni. Yes. Because Adam means man. So Adam HaKadmoni is the first human, mm -hmm. the primordial human. Mm -hmm. Right? We have, he talks about Nachash HaKadmoni in, in, in ancient Jewish sources. The ancient serpent, right? Mm -hmm. He has serpents all the time. I go out in my field and I see a serpent. Mm -hmm. So when we want to talk about the snake in the garden, that's called Nachash HaKadmoni, mm -hmm. the um, ancient serpent. Mm -hmm. Right? So Kadmoni means the ancient. It could also mean Easterner mm -hmm. and something in the East, but it often means ancient and clearly in this context. We know what it's referring to. It's referring to Exodus chapter 20, verse 13, mm -hmm. and Deuteronomy chapter five, 5, verse 17. By the way, here we have a beautiful example where the chapters in Hebrew come from the, 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 the non-Hebrew, right? From Stephen Langton. But the actual verse numbers differ even within Hebrew printings when mm -hmm. it comes to the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Do you know why that is? No, tell me. So there's two ways of reading the Ten Commandments. Oh. And in the manuscripts, the Ten Commandments actually have two sets of accents, mm -hmm. and sometimes two different vowels on a single word, because <laughs> the vowel can change based on the accent at the pausal, what's called the pausal form. Mm -hmm. And because of that, different Hebrew printings of Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 have the verses divided in two different ways. And, and not even two different ways, in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. So in, in my version that I looked it up for this preparing in accordance, it was Exodus 20, 13. You might open your Bible and say, Nehemiah's lying to you. It's not verse 13, <laughs> it's verse 15, <laughs> deceiver. But yeah, you just got a different printing of the Bible, I don't know. All right. <laughs> That's what they call in comedy a five percenter. Those who get it will get it. Move on. Okay. All right, so uh, you, you heard what it said, you should not commit murder. Now, Nehemiah, I, I don't want to go, but the next two words are really key. The next two words, the next two words. Is this the plus? Do we go to the next two words? I, I think we have to. Okay. We're, 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 we're keeping, now, so people are going to get upset, Nehemiah. They're yeah. going to say, why are you guys cutting us out? What's happening here? Why, why, are, why, are, we, why are we doing this this way? I mean, you know, 20. Well, um, so the reason we're doing it this way is, is that you know, we decided it when, we, when we first started this project, look, this is going to take a lot of time and resources. A lot of time. And, um, and by resources, that's the time to prepare, the time to edit, to the, produce. the money to edit, the staff to edit, the, um, all kinds of different expenses. And if we're going to actually do that, um, we want to, you know, one way to do that is to uh, make a program for everybody that, I mean, look, and I'll be honest with you, 98% of the people are accessing the public episode. Sure. And, and they're happy and they, and they really don't want, they don't want more or need more, they don't have time for more. Right. Right? And then there are people who say, I want more, and so for the people who support what we're doing and make it possible mm -hmm. to give to the other 98%, right. the, the idea was we're gonna do this plus episode yeah. as a way of saying thank you. Yeah. And that allows us to do the public episode. Yes. So I, I know we get people who say, it's not fair, I wanna yeah. watch the plus episode. Yeah. And, yeah. And both okay, of us give it, a lot of people access to that. Oh, if, if I get somebody who writes to me and says, I can't afford to, you know, to make a donation, but I need to see what's in the plus, well, will you pray for the ministry? Oh, absolutely, I'll pray for you. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So we, give, you know, we, yeah. we consider you a supporter. It's a prayer mm -hmm. supporter. Mm -hmm. If you can afford, we really appreciate it. If you can't, uh, and if you legitimately can't and tell us you can't, we're, we're not going to deprive you from that information if mm -hmm. you legitimately can't. We get people who say, I'm on a fixed income, Social Security. I live in India. You know, we don't even have PayPal or any kind of you know mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going you know, to give you access to that. But it's the people who are donating yes. that allow us to do the plus episode. Yes. And then we had the big controversy. 
well, how do we do this? I've got my ministry, McCord Hebrew Foundation. You've got BFA International. You came up with an amazing and idea. And I said, that well, it would not work. It would why not don't work. we alternate? Yeah. I know some people won't like that, but, you know, the, and, and, and the reason it's uh, odds is you, you weren't sure this vision would work. I said, okay, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> BFA International. If it doesn't work, we won't do it. Yeah. No, you're right. right. Yeah. And it did work, and we're able to continue now. Yeah. And, and where, now this time, actually, yeah. in this season four, we're going deeper, which the roll, I call it the roll up the sleeves, mm-hmm. where, where, where the, those plus people that have been patiently supporting yeah. us for all those previous 52 f- episodes, mm-hmm. they're now getting what I call the real gold, meaning, I mean, it, we're, we're going into depth in the plus, and so that's where we get a chance to squeeze in the I mean, I would say there's gold in both <laughs> yeah, of them. That, absolutely, but I'm saying when you get into the nitty-gritty of it, yeah. at least for me, it's, it's changed my life. So. What really excites me and what we're going to get to in the plus is, yeah, we're going to talk about how there's a difference in the Hebrew and the Greek about mishpat mavet, the sentence of death. And yeah. in verse 22, it's just a, I'm a spoiler. It's a bit different. The most exciting thing to me is he who calls his brother, and in the Greek, it's raka. <laughs> and we have, we have sources yes. that shed so much light on this. Yeah. It's one of these things where you're like, wow. Mm. Talk about putting something in its historical context. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Hey, can I? Can I? I mean, this is. I'm not going to ask a lot, folks. Yeah. I will de- continue to decrease. You increase. I'm not going to say a lot because I've got a chance to study with you. No, study with you and Nelson in the secret. I've got a chance to do this ahead of time. But I will tell you, there's a lot of people that are going to be blessed by just doing this. And we've created an app for the free people. Oh, go to BFA Flicks or Biblical Foundations and Android or Apple, and you get an app that has featured. Hebrew Gospel Pearls, all of our public episodes from 16 on. Wow. So I want to say thank you uh, for you, again, because you're the one that provided us the resources. Literally, mm-hmm. McCor provided us the resources by allowing us to be in this whole process, mm-hmm. people coming into it. Your idea that you came up, I was upset about it. I said, it's not going to work. We shouldn't do it. And now here we are two years later. And not only does it yeah. work, Nehemiah, that is the why we've been able to create all of this other um, mm-hmm. information, inspiration, revelation. So thank you for that. Tell people what that is. I, I, yeah. love what, I love what Keith does. He'll like point to the screen or he'll point to something there and there's nothing on the screen. You don't know what's on the desk. <laughs> he knows what's, what's on the screen five, you know, five minutes before we yeah. started. Yeah. What do you have so, on the desk? So this is a very, about? very, 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 very simple process that in season four, what we're asking people that want to be uh, study partners, we're calling it. Hebrew Gospel Pearls Study with Dr. Nehemia Gordon, PhD. We're helping you to prepare in advance by going to the Red Letter series. You actually can go there. We no longer have the interlinear for Hebrew Gospel Pearls like we did for the previous episodes. Okay. Now it's just for our study partners. They go in and they can see not only we have some, some red, alert, red alert words, we've got uh, the actual interlinear there, the pointed text. You got to show the interlinear because that's yeah, kind of cool. No, no, I've literally never seen this until just no, now. No, 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 no. So we'll, here's what we'll, we'll do. This. What on screen, this? Cool. we're going to show the interlinear on screen. This gives people a chance. I mean, I just think this is a really cool tool. But it started so we're because... throw it up here on yeah, screen? Yeah, we'll throw it up here on the screen. So describe what Let we're looking see at here. It. So what we're looking at is you see the Hebrew, the pointed text, which, by the way, was a gift. Mm. from you, uh, the process that we went through. And then we've got an Eng- a Hebrew w- or English word of what that word is, and then people get a chance to say, okay, this is the Hebrew word, this is the English word. Now here's the controversy. Mm-hmm. The English word is a result of all of the information that we have. Mm-hmm. So I gotta give you a secret. What's the secret? No, no, this is the secret. Going forward, before- Kill the before, mic. No, no, be- the before the study, <laughs> no, no. Before the study process yeah. with Nehemia Gordon, I had to sometimes, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have Jastro. Oh. There was a lot of stuff I didn't have. But now we've got you. So give it, guess what? we get to make sure that the words are correct. And in a way, you are participating mm-hmm. because you're giving us access to that information. And our study partners get a chance to study in advance. So they get to go to this verse before we study, and then they go into the comment sections at Nehemiah's Wall, the comment section at BFA. And we are actually going back and forth with the comments about this. It's pretty Hallelujah. exciting. Hallelujah. That's very cool. Yes. All right. Yehovah, Father in heaven, thank you so much for putting the people in our lives that have given us the resources that we can share this with the vast public Mm -hmm. who are listening to these teachings and watching the videos of these teachings and sharing these teachings and taking these teachings and processing these teachings and putting out their own teachings Mm -hmm. based on the journey that they've walked through with what we've been able to share. Father, this is such an honor and such a blessing. I thank you for putting me in this position. Mm giving me the time and the resources and the uh, intellectual ability to be able to do this. Mm. I pray that I grow in truth every day. In your holy name, Father, amen. And Father, thank you that we get a chance to witness what you're doing in ways that 
are really pretty quite, quite amazing. The different corners of the earth where people respond and say they're studying with us, people that have decided to, to walk along with us, just every continent on this globe, we've heard from people that are in this process. We thank you that we get a chance to be a part of this. Bless, protect, and keep us. We thank you in advance as we continue to study uh, language history and context of the words of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you.